Hi, everybody, and welcome. Today, I'm here with Amaya Sabine, who's here to share her testimony and answer a few questions about her journey from the new age to Jesus. So welcome. Hello. <laughs> and and you're in the you're in Amsterdam, right? Uh, well, near Amsterdam, actually, the Lord just moved me to a smaller um, city just just next to Amsterdam, really. Yeah. Big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Okay, so yeah. So do you want to just share a little bit about your journey? So I'll share everyone in the description in Maya's testimony on Spotify. It's divided into sections and it's it's really helpful. Like I learned a lot listening to it. And um like you just what I found interesting about it is that you know, for some people they find Jesus because they've arrived at rock bottom and like they've had really hard stuff happening to them and they've like in desperation like called out to Jesus and what mm -hmm. I found interesting about your story is that you describe yourself as being on the top of the mountain like living this really what sounds like an exciting life um having really good income and all of that kind of stuff so yeah do you want to share a bit about it <laughs> yeah I mean don't get me wrong I've I've been to rock bottom in my life a couple of times and it did it did some somewhat start at rock bottom uh, in my testimony i talk about how in 2000 the winter of 2017 18 i was just at my all time lowest and i did start praying uh for forgiveness and i say praying cuz i was talking to the universe or whatever you know i didn't know what what i was doing and I'm pretty I'm pretty convinced at this point that the Holy Spirit did come into my life and started changing things but I didn't know left from right I'd never heard the gospel so I was definitely not saved at that time um and then in the meantime I think God just allowed me to to climb on my own strength to that mountaintop where you know, just in every area of my life, um, it was the life that I'd always wanted. You know, I had community, I had a really, um, you know, I had popularity, I had money, um, uh, lots of friends, a uh, boyfriend. It just, um, I just had, you know, I just done therapy for a year. So I'd already kind of started trying to extract myself a little bit from the over-the-top new age um the only thing that i was still truly engaging in in terms of occult pro practices was astrology but you know you can't truly extract yourself from the new age so my whole worldview and ideology was still very much new age i was just going into a different branch you know because that's what the devil does he keeps morphing and changing so that it looks like mm -hmm. you're doing something else but yeah i was i'd actually given up the search spiritually speaking um i was like okay you know i've tried the whole meditation non-duality um search for enlightenment i i even thought you know i i tasted a lot of that and uh, i was going more like the you know the feminine of like the descent and and more into the body and mm -hmm. worshiping creation and feelings and pleasure um, so, you know, a very hedonistic lifestyle, which was, of course, also, yeah, I was suppressing a lot of pain and, and things. And I, mm. I was just not really seeking when Jesus found me and saved me. Um, yeah, and I'm happy he gave me that testimony because it is something that I can share with with other people who are like, well, I'm kind of happy with my life the way it is. Mm. I was yeah, I was too. And still we need Jesus. Still we need a savior. Yeah, I hear that a lot from people. And yeah, that's why I found your testimony really interesting. Um, do you know what it was that started you asking for forgiveness? No. I mean, I was just in so much pain. And it must have been the Holy Spirit whispering in my ear because what yeah I was not raised with religion whatsoever I was raised atheist um yeah the only notion of forgiveness that I had was the new age notion of we need to forgive ourselves we need to forgive others forgiveness was you know just kind of like a spiritual bypass in, in that sense um mm -hmm. yeah no 
Yeah, it's interesting because like this whole idea that inside of you, there was some kind of feeling that there was something you needed to ask for forgiveness for and that you're asking forgiveness from something like the universe is kind of impersonal. Like, why would you want to ask forgiveness from energy or <laughs> like love, like this universe of love? So, yeah, that's interesting that somehow when somehow when we say a tiny prayer then it just like clicks and then and then yeah the holy spirit comes in in some form even if like for you i think it was a little bit further along the line that you actually kind of found the realized it was the christian god and yeah that that was for for pretty much almost to, almost to the day like four years in between oh wow yeah yeah, yeah. and that whole in between time i only went way deeper into the devil's playground like I would say almost more than ever before I got really sucked into you know the worshiping of the feminine and creation and the body and money power uh, promiscuity uh, listening to some really dark demonic music um, yeah which the world thinks is normal music by the way but yeah it yeah. wasn't yeah yeah so um how did you how did you realize like when you were living this kind of amazing lifestyle and appearing to have so much fun like how did you start to realize that this is actually the like darkness even if it's appearing as light and I didn't until after I was saved. I'm one of those people also because um, one of one of the other main things that I was really deeply into was non-duality, <clears throat> even a counterfeit form of the Bible and Jesus, um, where evil does not exist, sin does not exist, right and wrong do not exist, light and dark are, are it's just all in your mind, uh, it's a separation that we are creating and projecting onto this, yeah, this neutral world, and oh my, um, so I did not see the darkness at all, but I, I, I get a sense that the Holy Spirit was doing something in my life for those four years because I always felt conviction about that lifestyle so when the Holy Spirit came into my life in 2018 I also stopped belly dance at that time already um, and all the other things so mm -hmm. some 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 cleaning was happening in my life um, so conviction I just didn't know what happened i had no words no direction no clue no guidance no bible um so a lot of things did change but then i started regressing back you know now i understand why because i i couldn't make sense of it and and the devil lured me back um and oh man the conviction was so strong um, but the devil started giving me more and more and more of his kingdom, you know, um, mm -hmm. I'm convinced that he started just, um, lavishing, um, fame and money and, and all of that onto me so that my flesh would just be super into it and, and really getting off of this popularity and, but at the same time, the Holy Spirit kept trying, like, you know, I also kept my heart was was breaking over what I was doing, but I was suppressing it so much. And I kept trying mm -hmm. to tell my friends, like, I was more popular as a belly dancer, for example, than ever before, but I wasn't feeling it anymore. And I was trying to talk to my friends, but I didn't know what was going on. So I couldn't really explain it. I was just like, think I have some sort of creative block or whatever and and then later when I went into polarity and feminine uh, whatever feminine business feminine this feminine that feminine leadership um oh man I was this kind of disgusted with that whole world and with myself mm -hmm. it was like a part of me was disgusted and another part of me was just so so thrilled that so many people were just following me and hanging on to every word and just sending me insane amounts of cash and <laughs> so it was a really weird time to be honest like 
it was like there was two sides of me and now I understand why of course it's it's yeah it sounds a little bit like a cliche but it's like on the one hand a little angel over your shoulder and a little devil that's <laughs> you know, not literally but there was two spirits trying to get my attention and for the for for four years I um yeah I suppressed my conscience I tr I tried to push the holy spirit away and the devil or his demons, whatever, were definitely rewarding me for that. Wow. So so do you feel like the devil, um, because the devil knew that you were drawing away, that he gave you the fame and money that he might not have given you if you didn't have that Holy Spirit coming in? <laughs> Who knows for sure, but that's definitely what it looked like. Yeah. After I got this tattoo in 2020, beginning of 2020 that's when I'm I'm just saying what it looks like from my perspective mm -hmm. I, I'm not 100% sure but after I got that tattoo just everything started to escalate so much um, yeah like I said all of the things that you just were just coming to like I, I felt like I wasn't lifting a finger and everything was just way too easy mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's interesting because you know for like many many of us I think a lot of women especially we're self-employed and maybe doing something spiritual or coaching or kind of some kind of self-help um and I wouldn't have called what I did exactly new age but mm. like I feel like my story I was always like I never quite got there I always had like little bits of money I was always just getting by um and we're always thinking of like, oh, how can I be bigger? How can I, I see some people having loads of success. How, like, what can I do to find that success? Um, so it's really interesting to hear about like having that success and then realizing that it's that it's coming from a dark place. Mm. Um, yeah, not to say that some people have money and they follow Christ, like it just depends. Like we all have different paths and different stories. So yeah. 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 Uh, looking back, it's also it's even hard for me to I I re haven't really, but like for example, to go through my the stories or the posts that I would post during those four years, especially, you know, Facebook and Instagram, they just show you a little bit of memory. So I've just <laughs> got like you know getting little snippets, but it's like oh, because I can just kind of see and feel the the energy, the spirit that was working through me that I was listening to that I was following it was so seductive and manipulative yeah so mm -hmm. a combination of, of seduction manipulation exalting yourself you know which is satanic um this world will love it because it speaks to their nature yeah On, honestly the more the darker you go the more fame and money will be waiting for you at the end of that tunnel yeah yeah and um like for anyone listening you know the new age it can look very beautiful and it might be that it appears that you're helping a lot of people you know like helping them with their confidence or their well-being or or you know having spiritual experiences or feeling good in their bodies um yeah would you share a little bit about why it's not as good as it seems yeah I mean if if you're on the wrong track if you're on the wrong road you can take one step after the other so you're making progress but you're making progress in the wrong direction mm. <laughs> you know and I always knew on some level I wasn't really helping people. I mean, I still to this day get messages from from women that have worked with me and they're like, oh, but you changed my life. And I was like, yeah, but I didn't save your life. So in the end, I didn't do anything really. Mm -hmm. And a few of those women have now been born again. And now they're like, oh, okay. I, see I get it. <laughs> yeah, no, that was bullshit. Um, but before they were saved, they were like, still kind of like trying to you know exalt me because they think that I, I was talking down about on myself or looking down on myself or being hard on myself it's like no it's just it's just the truth it's just a reality reality is sometimes a little bit hard but you know it's not harsh to say that um 
<laughs> you're going in the wrong direction with all of that work. What we need is forgiveness of sins. What we need mm -hmm. is, yeah. is salvation. And sure, having a bit of business advice or learning a bit about your emotions or, you know, feeling good in your body or talking to someone about some of your those things in and of themselves are not bad but the new age it's just even just anything that has just a tiny bit of good in it a tiny bit of innocence and it pulls it so far out of proportion and it makes you look completely away from christ and so if you're doing therapy or you're if you're doing embodiment stuff or if you're doing this or that or this or that but you think because of that, you don't need salvation, you don't need Christ, then it's of the devil. Yeah. Hmm. And um, yeah, can you share a little bit about like why why it's so much better? Because like, and it's someone listening to your testimony, they might at first think, oh, that just sounds so amazing. Like all those festivals and ecstatic dance, like why is it so much better to have like the peace of Christ? And Hmm. yeah when when you get the holy spirit he gives you such different eyes to see like what our eyes um tell us in a way is can be so deceptive and so distorted um my life was just one pretty much one big highlight reel of just exotic travel um a week long doofs um in in the desert oh that's an australian word um raves you know <laughs> cycle festivals <clears throat> five times ecstatic dance per week pretty much for years on end and well i could go on you know this could take a while <laughs> if i list all those things and When, you're, when your spirit is malnourished, when your spirit is just, yeah, has that God-shaped hole, mm -hmm. you do those things and you think they're just an extension of already being happy or fulfilled. Um, yeah. But what's really happening is that there is this God-shaped hole and you're trying to to fill it up with with a dance, with a party, with you know, yet another lover or partner or boyfriend or yet another exotic trip. And that hole gets filled up a little bit, right? It's something is 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 mm -hmm. you know trying is is it, there's a little bit less emptiness, but it never truly fits you know there's still all these these leaking holes and I, I it's only in in retrospect it's only in hindsight that I see that I was suppressing my conscience conscience of this actually doesn't make me happy I am not going to ecstatic dance five times a week because I am so happy I'm not going to um, trip on psychedelics for a whole week in a desert because I am so happy I'm not having yet another lover because I am spiritually completely satisfied and in a good place I'm not going on yet another exotic trip I'm not doing all of these crazy things to my looks and sharing naked pictures of myself online because because I'm spiritually um where I'm supposed to be and that is a, a flip in in perspective that only the Holy Spirit can give because the moment you receive the Holy Spirit your conscience is just fully awakened like the full light of the Lord of God is just showing on it and you're like oh and all of a sudden you see that throughout your whole entire life there was this tiny tiny voice whispering to you like you're not doing all of these things because you're spiritually satisfied. You're doing these things because you're spiritually malnourished. Yeah. Um, that, that perspective can only come after being born again. We can kind of maybe vaguely see it, but we're, we're in the dark. The only true light is the Holy Spirit. So we're in the dark and, and we're suppressing the truth. We're suppressing our conscience. 
We're like, no, 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 I'm happy. That's why I'm doing all of these things. And the moment you're born again, it's like you've been pressing this cork underwater like your entire life. And it's just, poof, it comes up. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And I've just had zero desire to go back to these places other than a couple of times where I was like, well, a lot of my friends are there. I tried, not, not ecstatic dance and stuff, but a few other like semi-spiritual-ish parties. And I just had to turn around within 10 minutes. Like I cannot. Mm. Yeah. I just yeah. felt the sadness of like, oh, wow. I was in these places spiritually dead, sad and empty. And yet partying, like I was living my best life. Like I was being spiritual by doing all of these things. And I wasn't. Yeah. So interesting. And yeah. I, I, when I became born again, I, I never realized that like we carry this guilt and we don't know it's there because mm -hmm. I think like I haven't murdered anybody. I haven't like done anything that really bad apparently. <laughs> and, um, but we, yeah, we don't know that we live with this burden. I felt like I constantly had this kind of low level anxiety, like not like a mental, mental health issue or anything that would be serious getting in the way of my life. But it was just like always there, like whispering in the background and like this like the safety like the sort of cozy feeling of like feeling safe and knowing yeah that you're not doing things wrong I mean you might do little things but that you're forgiven and it's like such a difference and well for me that feeling was actually really strong my entire life depression anxiety yeah, guilt, yeah. Pain, from a super young age um, I don't have much recollection, but I, I know from the moment that I can think back, I was depressed and I knew something was wrong with me and I knew something was wrong with the world. Um, it's what drove me towards new age spirituality, towards seeking. Um, so I'm happy for that. They they wanted to get me on antidepressants when I was 19. And I was just like, what do you mean? The whole world is depressed. I could, you know, I, you know, I didn't have the full revelation that I do now, but in a sense, I was like, we all need saving. We all need yeah. God. Like, come on. Um yeah, and much, much, much of the new age uh, obviously is so driven by trauma and pain and and depression and anxiety and yeah it's completely works based it's like either I'm going to work really hard for it or I'm just going to capitalize on my own pain and that of others I I, I, I did both of them really I was a true seeker but when I was like okay I've pretty much looked everywhere I didn't find I thought I found it so many times uh, for a very very brief window of time and then I was like no and so then I was just like, well, then I'm just going to write really beautiful things about my pain and become some sort of role model for that. And then other people's other people come to me with their pain and I just tickle their ears, tell them what they want to hear in a way and charge a lot of money for it. that was not a conscious conscious mm -hmm. thing. That I was yeah. <laughs> but that was definitely happening. And I, I cannot unsee it anymore now in this in the new age scene it's like oh it's sad yeah, yeah. for anyone for anyone listening like this thing works based it's like a christian term that um for other forms of spirituality and other other religions where you have to do something to achieve the reward <laughs> whereas in christianity it's it's the only one that's the complete opposite where you don't have to do anything like you're instantly forgiven um simply by believing and like inviting Jesus into your life so while you will change naturally from having the Holy Spirit inside of you if you um accept Jesus into your life you don't have to do anything to achieve that so um yeah I just thought I'd explain that yeah because in the in the new age it looks like things happen like I've had that I did a writing workshop and I remember someone in which is not exactly new age but someone was like oh that changed my life and um blah 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 and then I just wonder it's like a good feeling in the moment but and it might have brought some insight that can you know there's there's an element of truth and I don't know yeah truth in it but does that last and then they might go on and do other things and I know often when I've had one of those good experiences spiritually then I start wanting to do more and go and find this thing and, and do that and we're always working we're always seeking 
um but yeah we don't we don't quite get there well that's the thing with um pagan spirituality so any spirituality that isn't you know um a revelation of the one true god uh in christ is that because there's always this 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 um this art there's just justification well like but my life is getting better i am progressing i am evolving if i had not been born again right now i would still be in that and i would still think whoa my life is continually getting better but if you're not if you don't if you're not saved and you don't have the perspective if you don't have god's worldview and his perspective and everything um you look with very worldly flesh your sinful nature is basically getting its way you're feeding your sinful nature your flesh your flesh is making progress your sinful nature (laughs) fed day after day after day so if you're a sinful person which we all are um but i mean before salvation if you're a sinful person you're like well my life is getting better and better and better it's like yes in a sinful way you're progressing in the wrong direction and there's only one final destination for that but so if you're looking uh through your sinful nature like with with those scales Mm -hmm. on, and you're like well my life is getting better and better and better it's like yes your sinful nature is growing and growing and growing and that is just something that you cannot comprehend and and see and not want until you're born again and have a new nature and you want to feed that new nature with a completely different destination and all of that progress in a worldly sense um it just doesn't add up anymore yeah and it it is like it's impossible it's one of those things where it's impossible to understand what it's like unless unless you've experienced it like before you you can't imagine there's anything missing or Mm. yeah and and I can relate to your story in the sense that I at the point when I when I got saved um I felt yeah I felt like I was happy in my life like um yeah like the last few years have been difficult for a lot of us but overall I felt like I'm happy in my life in my relationships in my work you know I've always felt like that really apart from like a few low periods in my 20s and um teen years but yeah like you just don't know anything's missing and and I've had people say to me I'm happy I don't need Jesus and yeah like you can actually be happier and more content and yeah and yeah be supported by the God of the creator of the universe so (laughs) that is such a better place to be yeah um yeah so what does it look like in your life now like oh I wanted to ask when when did you like pick up a bible like when did you realize oh like Christianity is calling me not until after I was born again (laughs) wow Um, (laughs) I didn't know I was born again for the first few weeks um it took me I I don't know like four or five weeks to start reading the bible after I was born again I know the exact day, date, hour, pretty much when I was born again. Um, but I'd never read a Bible in my life. I'd never touched a Bible. I'd never been to church, uh, except for New Age events <laughs> being held mm-hmm. in church. I didn't know any born again Christians. I didn't even know any Christians. So yeah, it was it was it was a learning curve in the beginning. Yeah um so yeah about let, let's say five weeks after I was born again because mm-hmm. I received um a revelation from God that just my whole world just went like boom everything 180 complete 180 it was just like oh what um and I knew in that moment without any shadow of a doubt the Bible is the word of God and I was like yeah that's so- and that be? because I had been completely programmed and brainwashed um thank you educational system thank you Netflix thank you secular society thank you new age life where just everything is just completely 100% antichrist programming especially in a place like Amsterdam like the Netherlands where I live it's completely progressive and secular as I'm sure you're aware. 
Um, so my mind was just completely filled to the brim of, of just, I thought I knew what was in the Bible. I'd never read it. I was mocking the Bible. I was mocking the real Jesus. I thought I was following Jesus in a way, but it was a new age Jesus. Um, so even though the Holy Spirit testified to my spirit that the bible is the word of god i you know rationally it was just so hard to comprehend i was like but these books have been written by man and they have been altered and people have just misunderstood them for two thousand years right <laughs> that's christianity there's no other way but i knew in that moment i'd been wrong and the jesus of the bible was real um, many of the stories of the scriptures became alive in me before I'd ever read the Bible. So it's not like, um, it's, not, it's not that I knew certain scriptures, because some of my friends, they just started speaking scripture the moment they were born again, even though I'd never read the Bible either. I didn't have that. But for example, the story of Exodus, it was just alive in me. I yeah. somehow it that's why I also patterned my testimony after it mm -hmm. the Lord started using certain stories in scriptures very early on to to sanctify me um, to convict me yeah but to actually buy a bible and start reading it um, I actually spent those first five weeks doing a ton of research to get my mind up to speed with the spirit. I was like, if this is true, if this book is not altered, if it is the preserved, inspired, infallible, inerrant word of God, then we must be able to, to track that in the natural. Mm -hmm. And that turned out to be true. There was just enough evidence. It's so, so clear that all these conspiracies are not true. But if you don't actually do that research and you just let television and and new age friends and and the educational system just inundate you with all religion is for dumb people and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you're just not going to see that. And you're you're, you're going to think you're walking around super informed about religion, about spirituality, about Jesus Christ. And it's just it turns out to be just a house of cards. And you, you do that and it's it's knocked mm -hmm. over. Yeah yeah it's um, a question by the way <laughs> um yeah it's funny because like so many people say it's altered it's been edited but it, no one can explain which bits have been edited and which aren't because they acknowledge a lot of people acknowledge like jesus is real and he's got good teachings because how could you say that his teachings are bad when it's all about love and everything but um yeah and and the whole stupid um christians are stupid like um yeah yeah right. that, yeah is is the main obstacle because i'm also uh, a relatively intelligent person uh i'm very rational um i want evidence even for spiritual things i'm i'm skeptical in a way but a healthy skepticism right mm -hmm. not a skepticism of like oh i don't believe anything and um but like i said i received a revelation directly from god and nothing could have changed my mind after that as in people telling me this or that but I was like but there needs to be physical evidence and I'm not one of those people that was like well I don't need to see the evidence I was like the the natural and the supernatural must correlate and and, and it does yeah yeah so when you say you received a revelation from God what did that look like did it all just kind of come into your mind or um no it's spirit yeah like uh, i said yeah. it was just completely shat like my mind couldn't believe what the spirit was tested but it could believe but also i don't know it's not a vision it's not an audible voice i've had one vision um that i received from god it hasn't happened ever before in my life nor since um revelation <laughs> I thought I knew what revelation was, you know, because in the new age, we speak a lot about downloads and epiphanies mm -hmm. and breakthroughs and it's nothing like that. 
it's it's literally like I've been walking around with my eyes closed my entire life and all of a sudden they were open and I saw the true light yeah yeah so you around your entire life they're only metaphor that's this is I think this is why Jesus spoke so much in parables because there are no words to to accurately um adequately describe what a revelation is and i've had smaller revelations since of the word but that was just um my whole worldview just going from like this you know i knew new age worldview to kaboom and i was just mm-hmm. sitting there what um all of a sudden i could see my sin nature whereas before i mocked original sin and i fought hard against it i called myself a heretic a uh, capital H you know uh, I was selling programs under that name uh, mystery schools feminine mystery schools so I was completely the opposite of all of that it wasn't a gradual process I wasn't reading the bible it was just in a split second um and just everything that came with that I couldn't dress the way I did I couldn't wear the same makeup the way I did I couldn't talk the way I did, I couldn't live the way I was just living one second before music, fornicating, uh, just, I could just see all of a sudden, like, I'm a created being, Lord, you are God, and you are Lord over my life, and this is your universe, and your standard is my standard now and I no longer follow my own way or my own truth my own so-called truth and I just repented right then and there on a park bench and this went on for about a week I could barely speak um I, I felt like a newborn like literally I was just like what is this world I was just like, you know and I've sort of kind of almost had that in a, in a different way of course on on like psychedelics mm-hmm. uh, but th- those things are not revelation you're just opening up the spirit realm and it's like oh everything is like so pretty and so but it just doesn't add much to your life other than mm-hmm. it's a nice experience it was like I was seeing the world as it truly 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 is for the first time and then only with Bible reading, so feeding the, the Holy Spirit with the Holy Spirit, that picture just became clearer and clearer and sharper and sharper. But I, the moment of revelation was from having never seen the world as it truly is to seeing the world as it truly is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it sounds like it just happened. Like, because for me, I got that later, like after reading the Bible and thinking, I think there's some truth in like I started with revelation so I was like I think there's some truth in this so I read and explore (laughs) and then gradually like having that born again experience and like getting a bit confused like why like everything would be I think you described in your testimony going through that when suddenly things that you used to love doing you just get like an icky feeling and it's just like you want to just step away and yeah so that's really interesting that that all happened before like you picked up a bible and yeah the bible was just yeah. a confirmation of everything that already shifted in my life when i started reading it yeah and like i said i'm a very skeptical person and and very stubborn and hard-headed i think god you know he gives us all our own borning and experience at the right time but also in in the particular way that were I would never have picked up a Bible if I'd not already been born again. And God knows. Yeah. Was us better than we know. <laughs> so not everyone has um such a uh, earth shattering experience if you don't need it. And honestly, if you don't need it, um props to you. Um, you know, blessed are those who haven't seen and yet believe. That's I, I know I'm uh, the application is a little bit different in scripture, but I do feel it, it goes for the born again experience as well. If you can just read the Bible and have progressive revelation through that uh, in a milder way, I think the Lord will do that. But if he sees like that's not going to do the trick. Mm-hmm. Intense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it reminds me. So a friend of mine, she um she knows someone that used to be in the mafia in Italy and he and Jesus came to him in a vision and he was wearing like a leather jacket and he was like telling him off like you shouldn't be doing this 
because that's what he needed like something that would speak to him personally so yeah okay um yeah so I don't know I had just like a few questions like do you have any advice for anyone I guess like it might be different for you because it just all kind of happened but if someone's like um I don't know wondering what the truth is like is the bible real um what about the new age surely there's some good in it do you have any advice about like taking these first steps to like see if jesus is real and um, that kind of thing hmm. yeah i think you know if if anyone even looks at testimonies or consumes any kind of this content i think it's it's if you can recognize that you wouldn't be looking at this kind of content, if there is not even just like this tiniest little voice telling you um, that there is more to this, you know, that it's not just a bunch of people that, you know, found some alternative to the new age that is just, just as exciting or whatever. Um, you know, if you, if you truly have found god if you if you've ended up at the feet of the cross if you've if you've arrived and a lot of new ages are completely against that concept because the devil and in his kingdom they want you to keep searching everyone there is a seeker of the truth but no one is a finder of the truth mm -hmm. so they're very much against this notion of arriving and so my question would just be how can you know for sure that that is true that you are meant to always just keep looking but not finding um and if there is even just like a tiny part of you that is curious like is there another way than to just keep searching and to keep pretending like i do not feel this sense of i have not ended up at the truth i have not ended up at the feet of the true living god um stop suppressing that stop suppressing your conscience and just cry out and you don't have to know what you're doing I didn't know I thought I was crying out to the universe <laughs> yeah. and it was the true living God that answered it was Jesus that actually responded um, there is inside of us in our conscience our conscience is still testifying that there is one true God and that we are guilty, that we are sinners, and that there is a truth, and it is one truth. It is not a multitude of truths, because that doesn't exist. Even though the New Age has has fried our brains and suppressed our conscience so much, it is still in there. And we, we can get it back, and we can get it back fully. We can have full revelation of the one and only truth. We can have a fully awakened conscience. We can live and walk in the light um and yeah it's truly my my wish that yeah that if that 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 small little voice is 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 still talking to you stop suppressing it yeah thank you that's really really good advice because I don't know if I would have heard it when I was in the new age but just like I can recognize it now that there was this little voice speaking inside of me so yeah yeah you know, that, that's why I, like I said, I'd stopped searching. I was very much in a, in a mountaintop experience of my life. And yet the moment I stopped suppressing that part of me that knew I haven't arrived at the truth. I haven't arrived at, <laughs> at the feet of, of the true God. It's just a vague, blurry concept to me. And, and I have a lot of lofty spiritual notions and concepts about God. And I've had incredible transcendental experiences. And yet here I am. And the moment that I just stopped suppressing that still small little voice and cried out for the truth the, that, that second I was born again. And it may, it may not happen in a second for everyone, um the the god might have to walk you through a lot of resistance and and slowly taking away all of these idols these false gods out of your life um but if you truly want 
the truth if you truly want god the one and only true god he will take you there he will um he will give himself to you yeah and um... So my experience is, as well as sort of reading the Re Revelation and the Bible, a bit of the Bible, I just said the Lord's Prayer. And then like I, I instantly felt the presence of God and it felt like really, really different to like anything I'd ever experienced with other spirituality. So I knew that God was real. And I've heard lots of stories where someone just says a prayer like, Jesus, if you're real, come into my life or like I think he always answers those prayers like because why would it, like because someone's seeking the truth someone's open to it like if you do have that openness and you are seeking and are willing to just pray then then you get an answer and yeah it will be revealed and yeah you just have to be honest enough to to maybe even search our own hearts to be like what direction am I seeking in because I was also seeking but I was only getting further away from him and yeah only he can turn us around yeah to be open open to any truth even if it's like that awful Christianity that we hate <laughs> exactly because yeah. that was in my cry um like, I want the truth, no matter what it looks like. I even said, like, if it is Islam, if, if, if I need to be Muslim, <laughs> if there is no truth, if it is, you know, um, no. Yeah. Well, thank you so that's, much. That's just, that's, yeah, I mean, that's just like a, the, the, a true prayer of, of humility. That's a yeah. hard posture of being on your knees. Um not my truth, but your truth. Not my will be done, but your will be done. And of course, yeah. afterwards, when you start reading the Bible, it's like, oh, it's all there, you know? <laughs> yeah, but, and yeah, instead of choosing, because I mean, so much spirituality, it's like, oh, I'm going to do this workshop and I'm going to start this practice because I need to feel good and I think this is going to help me. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. Capital S self. Yeah, whereas this is like, uh, yeah, I just want the truth it's not it didn't come for me as a way to feel good but yeah just like yeah the truth and and it does bring you, you happiness and joy and feeling good so yeah not all the time but there is it that took time for me um I wanted the truth but it's definitely not a cliche of like the truth will set you free but first it will piss you off um it was not an easy um walk for me no yeah well, thank you so much for sharing and yeah i hope that everyone listening enjoys this and yeah wants to explore further the topic of finding the truth for yourself